but the origin for me of writing was always just that, like, here's a, you know, I would grab my little notebooks and I'd spend hours um, just recording what random observations I saw. And I did that for years. Uh, and then I still do that from time to time. Um, because I could take the world and put it onto paper. And it was my world, suddenly. And it was my vision of my world. And somehow, it didn't go away anymore. It didn't, time didn't seem to disappear as quickly. Memories didn't seem to disappear as quickly. Um, you can kind of slow down time. You can slow down reality in a way that um, I, you know, I think musicians find the same way of doing it with music, and painters do it the same way. Um, all art forms are kind of there, I think, to, um, to help us create something out of our reality. Uh, when you were a little boy, uh, yes. When you were a little boy, did your parents tell you stories about uh, the Af African continent? Because you know, um, th this is a particular Af uh, continent with its uh, legends and stories. And I would like to know if uh, these, if you were told these stories, do they inspire you today in writing? Um, y my father told me stories of of, of like he would invent stories about um, animals in Ethiopia. Um, <laughs> that I've since tried to pick up, and I can't do it anywhere nearly as well as he did. Um, he could just sit there by my bedside and, you know, for an hour, um, create a narrative of, of a monkey fighting. It was always great because I love monkeys now as an adult, but he, he created some of the best monkeys ever in the history of man. Um, but that, I think, was, you know, there's definitely sort of, he definitely gave me some joy of literature um, from that part. But the, the real stories that I wanted to hear most were probably the ones that were never told until I was much older. Um, and those were the kind of personal family stories, the stories of, um, because I was never there to see this country until I was older, of, you know, like, I didn't even know uh, what my father's father's name was until I was 20, um, because he died um, very young, um, or what my grandmother's name was, um, where my parents met, how they, I mean, all the kind of lives that they lived before they came to America were pretty much invisible. Um, and so writing, it was almost because there were no stories, um, because I had to make them up myself, and because I could make them up myself, and they, I found that there was great emptiness filled by that. Um, I don't know if I'm ever really living in reality anymore. I've managed to just skip out of it. That's why I wanted to be a writer, was not to have to live in reality. Um, but I'm, 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 you know, my characters are, are, are run through my, well, I'm in the process of writing. They, they stay with me pretty much all day long. I, I write um, in my head constantly. Um, but, but those often, things, the things that I write in my head never actually make it onto paper because they're awful. Um, and so I occupy my brain, by and large, with thinking about these people. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I'm attached to them. Um, I care about them, and I care about their construction. But also, at the end of the day, for me, a novel is also, um, it's, it's an artifice. It's a sort of, it's a work. Um, and it's a work that has to be aesthetically beautiful to me. Um, it's a work that has to be um, crafted. Um, the same way that, you know, I don't want to see a painting that somebody's just kind of like throwing a bucket of paint on. Um, unless it's in the Whitney or in the, <laughs> um, because I believe in the craft. And if you if you're sort of so compelled or in love with your characters, then it's very hard to to make them um, do what they're supposed to do to make the novel work. Which means sometimes you have to control them. You have to like the characters just speaking to you. Sometimes that's a bit true, but by and large, it's actually you are the author. That's the there's power in that very limited world that very few people will ever care about. But it's your power to control them make their lives real. Um, and my family, um, they're, they're good. They're great. <laughs> I mean, I, I write at home. I get to see them all the time. But I, you know, when you write often for long periods of time, it's, you are a bit disconnected. Um, I have days where I don't really speak a single word um, until you know, somebody comes home. Or I mean, I speak to my children briefly in the morning. And then silence, oftentimes, for seven, eight hours. Um, so it's sometimes hard to step back into kind of the, you know, the physical world that other people live in with you. So, uh, as you said uh, earlier, your novel is considered among uh, immigrant literature. 
So do you think it's because of your uh, ethnicity? I mean, uh, racism? And I have a second question. Uh, what did inspire you to write this book? And uh, is there a happy ending to your book? Please. <laughs> so I can uh, <laughs> buy the book on love. <laughs> That's good. That's, see, that's one thing we all share in common is everybody wants a happy ending. Um, um, I, think, I think what categorizes the book of um, that, that sort of categorization of, of, of immigrant literature is um, it's just a no choice. I've always wanted to write um, this book or any other book. Uh, it's less a question of inspiration. Um, a book begins be, you know, because sometimes I have a nice small sentence in my head. And I began writing the book because that sentence stays in my head. Um, the first novel began because I was walking down a street in Washington, D.C., and I saw this Ethiopian man in a grocery store. And suddenly the first sentence of a book came into my head, his voice, um, the narrator's voice. And I sat down and I wrote the first five pages of the book um, that night. And then you know, three years later, there was a novel. Um, that's a point of inspiration, but that's not the inspiration is, can kind of be found anywhere. You know, um, the inspiration wasn't. This novel, there's no inspiration point. Nobody's, I didn't see anybody. Um, I just kind of sat down and I kept working at it until finally it made sense. Um, and is there a happy ending? All endings are happy because the book's over. <laughs> <laughs> it means you can begin another book. That's the joy of books. Um, and it's also, I think, the idea of a happy ending. A happy ending isn't the ending where suddenly everyone is, you know, having a great big parade and there's cake and, you know, wine and cheese. Uh, a happy ending for me is, um, is an ending that has uh, a bit of peace at the end, um, or an ending that has a bit of hope. Um, not an ending that gives you this, like it's kind of a lie to say that happy, most things in life don't really end happy. They end kind of okay if we're lucky. Um, and that's pretty good. Like, we should be pretty happy with kind of okay oftentimes. It's not that bad. Life is, fully, life is really complicated. I think we should be happy to have narratives that make us feel like this complicated. Um, I take more pl if a book ends happy for me, I'm often really just annoyed because I think that's just really not the way these um, things normally work out. Um, so the books, the books, all both of my books um, end, I think, on a, on a measure of optimism, of hope, and a measure of, of grace. Um, and it's up to the reader to decide if there's enough happiness in that for them. For me, when I finish both of them, I'm quite happy. <laughs> because it's over. <laughs> uh, on that note, I think we're going to wrap up this portion. I want to thank you for the wonderful reading. Um, and thank you for the, for the questions and answers. And, um, thank you. Before, uh, and before I forget, my boss was oh so kind as to point out to me that, uh, that Mr. Mangestu is going to be speaking again. We've invited him uh, as, a, as our guest author. Uh, the American author is going to be speaking at SELA at the book fair on Wednesday, September 28th, and that's going to be at 5.30 in uh, the Salle de Conference Bay. So I would hope to see you all there as well. And please uh, tell people and invite other people to talk. Thank you. <laughs>